For those new to the terms, authorization and authentication can be easy to intertwine. So let's go ahead and set the bar straight on which is which. Authentication deals with logging users in and out, registering new users, and things like that. Authorization, on the other hand, deals more with permission checking. Things like, can you use a view a page, create a record, etc. Now, in this series, we're going to be learning AdonisJS first-party package to handle authorization checks called Bouncer. Bouncer is going to allow us to define authorization checks in one place and then use those checks anywhere within our HTTP request lifecycle including within the Edge template engine. Now, under the hood, Bouncer does utilize the AdonisJS auth package. So you're going to want a project that not only has the AdonisJS auth package, but also utilizes that package for its authentication. Now, since in this series, we specifically want to just focus on Bouncer and not really setting all of that other stuff up, I've gone ahead and set up a project on GitHub called AdonisJS Bouncer that will serve as our starting point. So there's gonna be a branch here called 01 starting point that you're going to want to start at uh, and clone down. So let's go ahead and get that set up within our local environment. So let's get clone and get that created. And then let's CD into it. And then let's install the current dependencies that the project has. And then before we actually go about running the migrations for the project, let's go ahead and open the project up and get its environment variable set up. So let's copy the .env.example and paste that within this project, renaming it from .env.example to just .env. And then let's go ahead and update our database connection variables. Now I'm using Postgres here, so if you're using something else, be sure to install that appropriately. Now I'm gonna go ahead and update my user to just Postgres. My password is the very secure password. And then I have a generic database called AdonisJS block. So now that we have that set up, we can go ahead and jump back into our terminal and run our migration. So node ace migration run. There we go. So we got three migrations that ran, one for the user, one for the post, and one for the comments. Now that we have everything with the project set up, we can go ahead and npm run dev and take a look at what the project actually is. And then we'll go ahead and install and configure Bouncer within the project which will set us up for the next lesson where we will actually start learning about Bouncer. So let's go ahead and jump into our browser here and get the project up. So localhost 3333. You're gonna be welcomed by a pretty blank page with a simplistic navigation up at the top where you can register, you can create a new post, you can log in and you can go to the homepage. I did that in a very random order. So let's go ahead and register a user so that we can actually scope out the project at a greater detail so that we can see what exactly needs authorization checks within this project. Okay, so now we are registered. Let me get rid of my pop-ups. And you can see that because the register and login buttons change to a log out. Next, let's go ahead and create a post. So this is a test post, this is a test summary, and this is test body copy. And then we have a nice simple checkbox here to state whether or not that post is published. If it's published, it will be displayed on the homepage, otherwise it will not. So here we have a post, we can see the user it was created by, the title, the summary, the body copy, and we can edit and delete button for it. And then we also have a comment section here. So this is a comment and that will be displayed right down here with similar information and actions. Next, let's go ahead and create another new post. This one will not be published. This post is not published. This is a summary. <laughs> this is body copy. We'll keep that relatively simple. Let's go ahead and create that. And we can see the same thing here. Uh, next, let's go to the home page, and you can see we can only see the published post here. Now, within our project, if we open it up and we head into contracts directory, we have an enums directory, which contains a file called role. Now within here are the roles for our users within our application. So we have user, moderator, editor, and admin. Now user is the default. So anytime that a user registers within our application, user is going to be used. Users can create comments and delete comments that they themselves created. Moderators can create comments and delete any comments. So they're essentially going to be moderating the comment section. Editors can create comments and delete comments that they created. However, in addition to that, they can also create posts and edit and delete posts that they themselves created. While administrators are going to be able to do anything within our application. So translating these different roles to our application here, whenever user is not an editor or an admin, we're going to want to hide the new post button. In addition to that, we're also gonna to wanna to hide the edit and delete post buttons whenever the role does not allow them to do so. Same whenever it comes to comments, we're gonna to wanna to hide that delete comment button whenever the role does not allow the user to do so. Whenever it comes to the homepage, we're not going to want to restrict anything. And whenever it comes to trying to view a post that is not yet published, we're going to want to block everybody except for administrators 
and the editor that has created this post. So that's what we're looking at authorization wise. However, before we can start applying those, we need to get Bouncer installed and configured within our project. So first let's go ahead and jump into our terminal and let's run npm i at adonis.js bouncer to get bouncer installed within our project. Okay, and next we're gonna to want to configure it within our project. So node ace configure adonis.js bouncer. And this is going to do several things for us. So first it's going to create a file within the start directory called bouncer.ts. This is where initially we're going to be defining all of the actions. So things like, can a user actually create a post? Can they edit the post? Can they delete the post? Can they create a comment? Things like that are going to be defined within this bouncer file. It also created a bouncer contract for us in addition to defining the types within the tsconfig.json. Now within the adonisrc.json, it's added new ace commands for us. It's registered the bouncer provider, and it's also added that start slash bouncer file that it created within our project. And then since it added a new command, it also regenerated our ace manifest for us. So if we dive into our project and we take a look within the start directory, we should see this bouncer.ts file. And this is what it looks like getting started. Now, just like any Adonis.js package that you install, it's going to include a really nice comment block describing what each section does, in addition to having an example of what that section usage would look like. So here's our actions. These are where we're going to define initially whether or not a user can view a post, delete a post, edit a post, things like that. And then we also have a section for policies, which allow us to essentially group posts based on a resource. So we'll get into policies two lessons from now. In the next lesson, we're going to be focusing and honing in on adding our actions. Mm -hmm.